Getting shots of that decisive moment often requires split-second timing. One thousandth of a second earlier and nothing has happened. Or one thousandth of a second later and it's all over, the moment is gone and you've lost the shot. This, of course, can be very frustrating. So how do we capture those decisive moments accurately and so precisely? In this video, I'm going to show you how. I'm known for shots that often feature decisive moments and action. But capturing those shots can be tricky. And sometimes you need tools that will help you do the job. When we shoot with a camera, we either have to press a button on a screen or on something physical to cause the exposure. In any DSLR or mirrorless camera, there is a small delay in doing so. In DSLRs, there is also a slightly longer delay because the mirror in the camera has to lift up out of the way to let the light pass through and record on the sensor. One great way around this is to use the mirror lock up feature to reduce that delay time. But even with that, our human reaction times are not always quick enough to do the job accurately. And this is where triggers come in. Triggers are devices that are used to fire our flashes or our cameras or both at a very precise moment in time. And by using certain techniques such as delays, lasers or sound activation, we can utilize the power of these devices and their faster reaction times. There are many triggers on the market and I've used several different ones in my time and I continue to use different models for different purposes. And sometimes I still do it by eye because it's the most fun. Let's start with the basic sound triggers. These can be found as apps for your smartphone and with a simple kit cable release, they utilize the microphone in your phone as the sound trigger. They usually feature a delay time too. A delay time allows you to specify how long the trigger should wait before activating the camera shutter after it has received the noise. This may seem odd, but based on the distance of the trigger from the sound or the event that is likely to happen after the sound, then a delay time is actually extremely useful. Take for example this shoot that I did with flying tins of liquid. The sound trigger was activated by the clang of the tins colliding. But if I had activated the camera at that precise moment, then the paint would have not had time to escape from the pots and the shot would have been rather boring. By enabling a 30 millisecond delay, I found the most suitable time when the paint had escaped the pots and looked more interesting. Sometimes though, sound triggers aren't really useful. Maybe the speed of sound is too slow, or maybe the objects you're shooting don't make any sound. I had a similar experience recently on this shoot. I tried using sound triggers, but the noise created by the ball hitting the racket wasn't sufficient. So I switched to laser mode. Laser triggers are great. They allow you to use pretty much any laser pointer and aim it at the sensor on the trigger. The trigger will now only activate if that precise beam of light is broken by an object. This came in particularly useful for my tennis shot as I was able to direct the ball through the laser beam and position the laser at exactly the right distance with a very small delay time allowing me to execute the shot exactly as I intended. Other triggers can be activated by using light or even lightning and others by breaking an infrared beam. These are common in wildlife photography as the beam battery life is longer and it's invisible to animals. Others can simply be used as remote controls over a long distance. You don't even need to buy a trigger. You can ask an electrical engineer to design and make one for your requirements. Fellow photographer Orz Recker had one made with a very long cable that he could plug into the lights or the camera. And then he simply moved the trigger further from the sound as an alternative to a delay time. 
Finally, if you're looking for the fastest and minimum delay time, then I recommend you plug the trigger directly into your studio flashlights. Then you can activate and open the shutter on your camera in a darkened room so that there is no delay at all from the camera. Then when the sound, laser or object activates the trigger, the lights are fired almost instantaneously and the image is recorded without any additional delay from the camera's shutter. But don't forget that you don't have to use a trigger. You can also try and judge it by eye. I use eye judgment for all my model jumping shots and action shots because I prefer the spontaneity and the more random results that this creates, giving me more choice of expressions and moments captured. Well, I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of the shoots featured in this video and the techniques applied, visit carltaylereducation.com.